Well, hello there. It's a beautiful sunny day and the wind is, the breeze is blowing a little bit. It's so nice out here. The phone's shaking a little, but I just felt prompted by the Lord. Ooh, there's a bumblebee. It's so, it's a big fat black one. It's so pretty. <laughs> the, you know, those big fuzzy kind. But anyway, um, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to get on here. I don't know exactly why. And mostly I'm trying, just trying to be obedient because I avoid it almost every time I feel this kind of prompting. Um, I'm pretty much a spontaneous person, so I'm working on planning better. Um, so this is just spontaneous. There's no agenda whatsoever other than I just felt like the Lord wanted me to pray. Um, which is also very un uncomfortable to pray in front of people. But I hope that my obedience will help you with your obedience. That even when you don't feel like, you know, you have the answers or you're good enough or, you know, all the different thoughts that may cross your mind, that if, if you feel that the Lord is prompting you to do it, then just go ahead and do it. Don't worry about what other people are going to think or how they're going to respond because it's between us and God, you know, it's, it's the Lord wants our obedience. And, you know, if we're hearing the voice of the Lord, then we need to respond to it. Um, but also this morning I got the, this little pamphlet in the mail and I haven't even read it yet, but I, well, it's a book, but it's kind of thin, like a pamphlet. And, um, I just opened up right before I turned the light, this on to chapter seven and it's called the cross. So I just thought maybe I'd read that out loud. It's really short, just two pages. Um, but let me go ahead and read that. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23. There will be very little gained by self-denial unless you also take up your cross and follow Jesus. By the cross, I mean that load or burden or pain or sorrow or sacrifice, which could, if we choose, be laid aside, but which is willingly carried or endured for the sake of others. It is that which is the nat in the natural we would lay aside, but spurned on by the realization that there is no other way to bring salvation, deliverance, or healing to the lost, the sick, and the suffering, we willingly endure our cross. Looking unto Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. Hebrews 12, 2. Jesus didn't have to endure the cross. Even on the night when he was taken, he declared that he could yet, at that late hour, pray to the Father and he would send more than 12 legions of angels to rescue Jesus from such a fate. See Matthew 26, 53 and 54. He went to the cross because he had purposed in his heart to fulfill the scriptures and to deliver the race of lost and sinful men from the double curse of sin and sickness by bearing the stripes upon his back and by being sacrificed, a lamb without spot or blemish upon the cross. Moses partook of this spirit when he turned away from the throne of Egypt to identify himself with his brethren, a race of slaves, that he might through suffering and sacrifice bring deliverance to them all. See Hebrews 11, 24 and 26. Paul demonstrated the same determination when he left his place in the Sanhedrin to join the despised and persecuted sect of Christians that he might not be disobedient to the heavenly vision and that he might bring deliverance to the Gentiles. He was following Jesus, bearing his cross, when he declared, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might testify the gospel of the grace of God. Acts 20, 22 through 24. When Charles G. Finney left a promising law practice to enter the ministry, an untried field for which he had no special training, he took up his cross. 
But taking up the cross is not enough. It must be taken up daily. It must be taken up willingly and carried faithfully without fretting. It is easy to make a consecration, to take up the cross during the heat of an inspiring consecration call, but many fail to take it up again the next morning or the next. Christ never took a vacation from his cross. The cross even went with him on his vacation. Although he stepped aside many times to rest, even then the burden was heavy upon him. When he sat down by the well in Samaria, weary and hungry to rest while his disciples went into the city to buy food, he had time and strength to lead a soul to salvation and to start a movement which later brought about the great revival which swept most of Samaria into the kingdom of God, Acts 8. When he was confronted with one of the greatest griefs which came into his life as a man in the flesh, the sudden and violent death of his cousin and dear friend, John the Baptist, he thought to slip away alone for a little time. See Matthew 14, 13 and 14. But the people observed his going and followed him even then. When he looked upon them, he was filled with compassion. His own grief was forgotten and he took up his cross and went forth to heal their sick and to minister to their needs. The cross was not an accident which came to him at the end of life. He was born and lived and died under the shadow of the cross. He knew it was there all the time, but never once did he shun the cross. Never once did he fail to take up his cross daily. There was never a day that he could say, this day is my own. I will go about my father's business again tomorrow. I lost my place. Never an experience came into his life which he could say, this is mine to enjoy. The people must wait until this is over. Then I will meet them and minister to their needs again. Even in his times of sorrow, he could not say, my own grief is so great. It is no more than right, right that now I should be comforted. Let them minister unto me now. It was the night in which he was betrayed when he knew that the time had come and that the false disciple who would betray him sat among those to whom he ministered, that he rose from the table to wash the feet of his disciples. Demonstrating the thing which he said before, the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark 10:45. To, to the eyes of the world, it would seem that it was only that dark day of Calvary that he, bearing his cross, went forth, John 19, 16. But he had been bearing his cross as he went forth among the people, poor, despised, lonely, misunderstood, willingly, that he might bring with him many sons unto glory, going about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The world may not understand nor understand your cross and mine, or the world may not see nor understand your cross and mine, but each of us has his own cross, God appointed, which he can bear or not as he sees fit. This is not sickness which we are helpless to lay aside. It is not those unpleasant circumstances of life which would be ours whether we serve God or not. It is that which we accept willingly at personal sacrifice to ourselves in order that we may be obedient to God and a blessing to others. Have you been complimenting yourself on your cross bearing? And is it just a matter of feeling sorry for yourself about the circumstances of your life? Have you willingly taken upon yourself the burdens and griefs and sorrows of others that you might lift them and be a blessing that you might bring salvation and deliverance to those in need? You say you want God's miracle working power. Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to take up your cross daily and follow Jesus all the way? If you follow Christ fully, it will mean following him to the place where he was filled with the spirit, then on to the wilderness, to the hours of fasting and prayer, to the hours of unappreciated service, 
through the misunderstandings and persecutions, the nights of watching alone in prayer. It will mean following him into the garden, bearing the burden of a lost world, thinking someone nearby is sharing the load, only to find that all the rest have gone to sleep. Then away to the judgment hall, false accusations and unjust decisions. Now away to the whipping post and the cat of nine tails, the vinegar and the gall. It will allow no drawing back even from the pain and suffering of the cross. You may say that sounds like losing my life altogether. Indeed it is. But Jesus said, whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Mark 8, 35. This is life more abundant, the life of power, the life of real satisfaction, the life of knowing that your living has not been in vain. Surely it is worth every sacrifice to know that we have followed in the steps of the Son of God. Wow, that's really, really sobering to just think about the fact that from the moment from his childhood Jesus knew that that was that that was what he was headed for is to pay that price for us and that every step of the way he was laying down his life every step of the way every every moment that crowds thronged around him and then every moment that night leading up to the cross of all of the the pain and the suffering and it was all because he loves us so much he has so much compassion for us and he wants us to walk in his footsteps to have that same compassion for others it's just it's hard to even wrap your mind around how how deep his love is you know <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna cry just reading that. I don't know. I don't even know how to respond, but I'm I'm gonna pray. Lord God, I just pray right now that you would help us. Help us to walk into that calling that you've asked us to walk into, Lord. Walk into following you. Following you no matter what the cost is, Lord. I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us would be able to count the cost and still walk forward and, and still know that we are willing to stay steadfast and obedient. Lord God, I pray right now that you would break down any and all resistance to your spirit, Lord, to your spirit that's calling people to walk with you no matter what, no matter what the trials ahead may look like no matter what the scoffing or persecution that happens to them may be. Father God, I pray that you would strengthen your people, Lord. Strengthen us. Strengthen us for this battle that we're in. We're in an unseen battle, Lord. Father God, open our eyes. Open our ears. Open us up to hear your voice, to hear you and you alone. We want to hear your voice and no other competing voices, Lord. Help us, Lord, to distinguish between your voice and the voice of the enemy. Help us to know when we're following you and when we're not. Help us to know before we even take a wrong step. Help us to know deep in our spirit that, that this is the wrong way. Run. Don't go that way like Joseph did with Potiphar's wife. Lord, I pray, not even just in temptations, but just in walking in our life of two good paths, two paths that look good. I, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to have discernment and wisdom from your word and from your voice, Lord, that we hear deep within us. Lord, I pray for clarity right now. I pray for clarity and diligence, Lord. And Father God, I pray that you would just break off all of that, any kind of, um, complacency or laziness that might be coming over any of us Lord I repent for complacency and laziness Lord of just thinking that that maybe tomorrow I'll be ready 
maybe the next day, maybe next week. Lord, I, I, I repent of that. And now is the time. Now is the time to step into whatever you say. And you, I know you don't give us the full picture. That's why I choose to, I choose to obey you anyway, Lord. I don't have to have the full picture. I don't have to know all of the answers. You're the one that knows all the answers. You're the author and finisher of my faith. You're the one that created this entire everything. You created everything and you know everything. And you knew me before the foundation of the world. So I know that I can trust you. So Lord, I put that trust in, in your hands, Lord. I put my heart, I put my life, I put my being into your hands, Lord, and I trust you because you're the only one that I can trust. You're the, I can't trust myself. I've proven that time and time again that I can't be trusted, that I fail, that I have wrong thought patterns, that I have wrong mindsets and, and emotions. I allow my emotions to, to overcome me. I've proven it time and time again that in my own strength, I can't do it. So Lord, I'm asking you to be my strength. I'm asking you to be my strength, Lord. I relinquish the control to you. I relinquish everything to you, Lord. I am tired of trying to pick it back up again. I'm not gonna do it anymore. I'm going to trust you. And I'm putting that unbelief down now. All of the unbelief, all the wavering. The double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I wanna be a, an an effective prayer warrior who the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and and the righteousness is from is i wear that righteousness from you lord that's the only place i get righteousness that's the only place i get righteousness and and i have to rely on your strength because it's only through your strength that i can make it i mean literally that's the only way that we can even live that's the only way that we can make it through this, this trying world, this world that's full of chaos, Lord. But I, I know that you are bringing order and structure to my heart, my mind, my life. I know that I can trust you. And so I declare it now that I do trust you, Lord. I do trust you. And when those thoughts of, of, unbelief start penetrating my mind I put them away I, I cast them out now all unbelief you have to go now because I will not stand for it anymore I will not be a victim I will not give in to that victim mindset because I am a conqueror through Christ Jesus my Lord I am a conqueror and he conquers through me and so Lord just please Clarify my hearing, clarify my friend's hearing, Lord. Clarify our eyesight. Help us, Lord, to see you and hear you and to know you and to be submitted to you and walk according to your purposes and plans for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye. Love you guys.